about an encounter, the place of encounter. We are referring Beersheba as a place of encounter. Let's open our Bible to Genesis chapter 46. Genesis chapter 46 verse 1 to 4. I read. And, and Israel took his journey with all that he had and came to Beersheba and offered sacrifice unto the God of his father Isaac. And God spake unto Israel in the visions of the night and said, Jacob, Jacob. And he said, Here am I. Three. And he said, I am God, the God of thy father. Fear not to go down into Egypt. For I will, I will dare make of thee a great nation. I will go down with thee into Egypt, and I will, I will also surely bring thee up again. And Joseph shall put his hand upon thy eyes. Praise the Lord. From the introduction, first thing we have to do is definition of encounter. Encounter is defined as an experience that is unexpected or unpleasant or a meeting with someone that is unexpected or unpleasant also encounter is expected to be by chance is not always predefined praise the lord simply put it put it is either an experience or a meeting from the two definitions that we have above experience, encounter is either an experience or a meeting and from what we've been told here one key difference between encounter and meeting is it is encounter is unplanned meeting is always pre-planned encounter is all scheduled why meeting is always scheduled sometimes encounter is abrupt abrupt also meeting could be abrupt in some cases but not at all point in time encounter outcome is largely unpredictable in most meetings the outcome is always being predictable praise the lord Though for those who had the Beersheba experience or had Beersheba outcome, a Beersheba outcome was highly favorable and constructive. Praise the Lord. From the case of Saul, Saul of Tarsus, Saul of Tarsus had his own encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ on his way to Damascus. We can see that in Acts chapter 9, verse 1 to 9. Through that same encounter, he remains a pillar and model in evangelism. Praise the Lord. Also, an, another encounter is the case of the Samaritan woman. It was a meeting with the Messiah at the Jacobian well. We can see that in John chapter 4. In John chapter 4, the woman had an encounter, a personal encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah himself. Praise the Lord. Encounter is often not planned or anticipated. It is always a divine intervention in affairs of man or in a situation. Encounter is exactness of events or how things shall play. It's often concealed. It does not live a life the way it was. Praise the Lord. There is no way a man will have an encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ and his life will ever remain the same. Praise the Lord. Beersheba is a place of encounter with God. A place where God confirms his covenant. A place of turning point. A place of worship. Genesis chapter 26, verse 23 to 24. We can see it there. Let's open our Bible to Genesis chapter 23, 26, verse 23 to 24. Genesis 26, 23 to 24. And this is the case of Israel. And he went up from thence to Beersheba. And the Lord appeared unto him. And the same night, and said, I am the God of Abraham, thy father. Fear not, for I am thee, I'm with thee, and will bless thee, and multiply thy seed for my servant Abraham's sake. That is Isaac there. Praise the Lord. Also, Abimelech confirmed it in Genesis chapter 26, verse 26 to 29. That same chapter. 26, I'll read for that year. Then Abimelech went to him from Gerard and Auzat, one of his friends, and Phicol, the chief captain of his army. And Isaac said unto them, Wherefore come ye to me, seeing ye hate me, and have sent me away from you? 
And they said, We saw certainly that the Lord was with thee. And we said, Let there be now a note between us, even between us and thee. And let us make a covenant with thee. And let us make a covenant with thee. It was made clear there that even Abimelech could confirm that the Lord was with Isaac at Beersheba. Praise the Lord. Bless, of course, you can, before you have an encounter with God, you could be blessed. But one simple thing is, blessing is just like an end to a particular means. Until you get to the Beersheba, that is where the means is. But in most cases, once we are comfortable at a spot, once we are comfortable with what we are doing, we sometimes don't tend to learn further. We sometimes don't tend to press further. But if you remain at that spot, there is no way you can have an encounter with the Lord Jesus. You have to press further. You have to seek to know more. You have to work harder. That is when you can have your own encounter with the Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord. Of course, in the case of Isaac also, in Genesis chapter 26, Genesis chapter 26 made us realize that when Isaac was digging well, he dug the well at Robot, whereby he found water. But if it were to be a normal person, who does not want to press for that? He or she would have been comfortable at Robot. But it was made clear that Isaac pressed for that, and he went down to Beersheba, where he could now dig another, he dug another well, where he got to the well of to the point at which the well water can never dry again. Praise the Lord. At, we want to, I just want to admonish us. Yes, we might be comfortable at one point or the other, but let us always press for that. There is no limit to where the Almighty God can take us to at any point in time. Yes, you might be comfortable, but don't stick to that your boat that you are. There is a better place called Beersheba. Praise the Lord. Of course, let's go to examples of men who had encounter at Beersheba or experience. Or experienced it. We'll be making. We'll just be taking the case of Jacob and er, the case of Jacob and uh, and Aga. Those two. Those are the people that we'll be looking up at. Although they are not just the two people that had an experience, they are not just the two people that had a encounter at Beersheba. There are other people. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob picked their tent at Beersheba because they knew that blessing is not the end. It is just a pointer to God. So a lot of people had their encounter at Beersheba. Praise the Lord. Encounter is often... Who is controlling the mic? Praise the Lord. Encounter is often God's way of entering a life or situation. Or situation for fixing, to change, restoration, permanent solution, and taking charge. Praise the Lord. There are several examples in the Bible, but as I've already told you, we'll be limiting ourselves to that of Jacob and Edgar. Jacob had two experiences, two encounters at Beersheba. The very first one can be seen in Genesis chapter 28, verse 10 to 18. We might need to read it. Genesis chapter 28, verse 10 to 18. Okay.
is okay, sir. Praise the Lord. And praise the living Jesus. We can see from there the encounter that Jacob had with the Almighty God. Jacob had an encounter at Beersheba. That encounter remained a significant part of him for the rest of his life. If Jacob, if Jacob did not have an... Of course, Jacob had been blessed earlier on. But there is still a place of encounter with the Almighty God. That place of encounter was, happened just at Beersheba. You might now be saying that, uh, do we all need to get to that particular location called Beersheba before we have our own encounter? No. You don't have to get to that particular location called Beersheba. For you to have your own encounter with the Almighty God, all you need to do is seek to know more, seek to learn more about God, seek to know more about the Holy Spirit. If you seek to know more about God, definitely you have your own encounter with him. Praise the Lord. Of course, Jacob had a second encounter. That can be seen in Genesis chapter 46. Genesis chapter 46 from verse 1 to verse 3. Of course, I will be going through from the, what I have here. I will be going through verse three, chapter, verse, chapter 46 verse 3. Let me just look into it. Praise the Lord. From there, the very first point is, I am God. At the point of the encounter, there is something that must first happen. He must confirm to you that he is the one speaking. There must be a clear confirmation. Of course, we all know that there are several voices that come. You must be able to depict that this is actually God. And he must confirm to you that I am God. That happened in chapter, in, in chapter 46, verse 3. And, of course, there is something that I want us to know again. When there is an encounter, you will always hear, fear not. There is no way you will have an encounter with the Almighty God and fear will not grip you. There is no way. Just get that one right. Fear will grip you. It's not like the, every other person that you will see that you've, you, you are used to. Until you get used to him, often and often, of course, just the way we know, when you have a closer relationship with a particular person, you know at every point in time, even if you hear the sound of the door, I could remember when I was very small, the way we get to know that is our dad that is, that is coming is you will hear a very loud voice of the sound of the door. Once you hear that kind of sound, everybody clears the way you go and hide somewhere or you shall make yourself straight. So, of course, if you, have, if you are used to hearing God, you are used to having a, part, a personal relationship with him, that is where you get to know that you don't have to fear at every point in time when you see him. But at your first encounter, there is no way fear will not grip you. Of course, when you have that encounter, there is something that has to happen also. He, ha he needs to tell you not to fear. And when you have that kind of encounter, he, for you to be able to proceed to where he has destined to take you to, he still needs to confirm to you not to fear because he has already settled the battle for you. Of course, let's, let me read from uh, verse 3 also. And he said, I am God, the God of thy father. Fear not to go down into Egypt, for I will dare make of thee a great nation. He made his purpose clear to Jacob there. He, will make, he told him, I will dare make of thee a great nation. I will go down with thee into Egypt. He made it clear that you cannot go alone. Most times, most times when we hear God, when we hear God, we sometimes think that is all. We don't, at every point in time, seek his direction to be sure that he is actually there with us. In verse 4, he said, I will go there with you. He didn't say just go, but I will go there with you. So at every point in time, when we have an encounter with the Almighty God, 
after confirming that he is God, telling you not to fear, after all these things, seek him and ensure that he follows you everywhere you are going to. Of course, God gives us that free will. We have the free will to decide. After making a promise with us, that does not imply the promise will come to fulfillment immediately. You need that word of encouragement to make you stand through the journey. Praise the Lord. Let me go to the encounter of Aga in Genesis chapter 21, verse 17 to 19. Genesis chapter 21, verse 17 to 19. I... Praise the Lord. At Beersheba, Agar had an unusual experience, experience considering her plight. The very first point there is God called unto her through his angel after he heard the voice of her son. That we can see in Genesis 21 verse 17a. The next thing that you hear is fear not for God has heard the voice of the lad. Arise with your son, for I will make him a great nation. Our eyes were opened. Do you, can you see the series? First thing, God called unto her his angel, through his angel. The next thing, he confirmed, fear not, for God has heard the voice of the Lord. The next thing, he gave her the direction. Arise with your son. For I will make thee a great nation. Making a promise to him. After making the promise, her eyes was open to the well of water that was already there, but her eyes could not see. Which implies there are a lot of opportunities around us at every point in time. But if we did not we refuse to have an encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ, our eyes might not be open to see that opportunity. The grace to the Almighty God will open our eyes to see opportunities in the mighty name of Jesus. It is not that there are not a lot of opportunities around, but it is your ability to see more than others that depicts it. There are some people, there are people who have started one particular thing or the other before. When you, you start when you, you start your own, you will just be surprised that your own now supersedes that one that has been in existence before. It's because there is a clear direction. You might now be asking, how about those people who does not know God? How come they still do some things and yet they are better than the ones who knows God? There is a place of work. There are some, of course, when I said we need a personal encounter with the Almighty God, after having the personal encounter with the Almighty God, he, give, he has decided to give you the direction. If he gives you the direction of where he's going to, did you bother carrying him along while you are going on the journey? That is it. Do you bother carrying him along while you are going on the journey? At every point in time, let us always go along with the Almighty God. Everywhere we are going to, don't let us think we have known everything all. Yes, people outside there, they are doing good. And yet, of course, we, if you are talking about the richest man in the world, you, the, rich, the first set of uh, 10 richest people in the world, they are not Christians. Yes, they are not Christians. But is it that the Christians cannot get there? Is it that the Christian cannot be named as the richest in the world? Is it that they cannot acquire that kind of wealth? Of course, it's possible. But what we do with our own money is different from each other. The way you get to know people who are wealthy, of course, you check their bank, uh, their bank accounts, you check their investments. Somebody who is a Christian, who does, most Christians, most Christians, I'm not talking about the Christians who are doing business. Most Christians who are pastors, they don't have business. You can't say their own money. You can't, you can't count their own money and say you want to count the business. There is no way. You can't quantify it. There is no way. So it, the fact that they've never been named as one of the richest in the world does not imply they're actually not rich. That is simple truth. 
But when it comes to the area of the Christians, Christians in business, why are they not being named as one of the richest in the world? Any answer to that? Maybe, eh? You said? Let's wait to your question and answer session. Let me proceed. From the account of Jacob, of course, let me just give us some anal analysis from the account of Jacob and Edgar. The very first thing, when you have an encounter, you will have your own personal, you will have your own personal encounter with God. There, if you realize that Isaac already had an encounter with the Almighty God, where he already confirmed, made several promises unto the generations to call. Abraham first had the encounter. After Abraham, Isaac had his own encounter. Now Jacob had his own encounter. You cannot depend on the encounter that, the, that your parents already had with the Almighty God. You cannot depend on the encounter that maybe your father in the Lord already received for you. Yes, those encounters are very important. They are very tangible. They are very important in someone's life. But your own personal encounter is necessary. The very first thing, you must have your own personal encounter. The next thing, he will give you, of course, we can see that in Genesis chapter 46 verse 2, where Isaac, where Jacob had his own encounter, Genesis chapter 21, verse 17, yeah, where Hagar had his own encounter. Also in Genesis chapter 28, verse 13, that is where Isaac had his own encounter. Of course, the second one, he will give you a word that will take away every altar of fear or doubt from you. There is no way you will have an encounter with the Almighty God. That every altar of doubt that you might have will not go away. If you have an encounter, that is certainly going to be eliminated. We can see that in Genesis chapter 46 verse 3 in the case of Jacob also and Genesis 21 verse 17 C in the case of Hagar. Also the third one is you will receive a clear direction of where you are expected to be. There is no way you have that kind of encounter with the Almighty God that there won't be a clear direction of where you are going to be. Also we can see that in Genesis 46 verse 3 B in the case of Jacob and Genesis 21, 18 to 19 in the case of Edgar. And the fourth one, there is always assurance of his presence with you. There is no way you will have an encounter with God and there won't be an assurance of his presence with you. Now, is, is everything now depends on you. Are you ready to allow him to continue with you or you want to be faster than him? Some people, in some cases, they put God behind. Some people, they decide to allow God to be in front of them and lead them. I've, there, I don't know how true this story is. I've heard about a, a case of a man, of course, not a Nigerian a man, who was, uh, who was uh, going somewhere, and I can't remember the substance that the person said, I, 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 maybe God be with you, I see you off with the Almighty God. But he said, let the Almighty God, let Jesus be inside my boots. Why going, the man had an accident. The entire car got crashed, but the boot, nothing happened to it because he decided to leave Jesus Christ in the boot of the car. Praise the Lord. Wherever you are going, it depends on what you want to do. If you want God to go with you and walk with you, you want to walk with God, you want him to walk with you, it all depends on you. And if you want him to just be behind and be watching you, he can decide to watch you also. The Almighty God will give us the wisdom to allow God to be work with us and be ahead of us in the mighty name of Jesus. Of course, by default, you will be conformed to whatever you fail to confront. I want us to know that. There, whatever you fail to confront, there is no way you won't conform to it. After the Almighty God, you've had an encounter. He already gave you an assurance. You still refuse to move. There is no way you won't conform with that state that you are. Only those that challenge the status quo can truly rise above it. If you refuse to challenge your present state, you will remain there and you can never rise above it. I pray that the grace to be able to rise above the, our present state, the Almighty God will give unto us in the mighty name of Jesus. The grace to be able to confront every battle ahead of us, the Almighty God will give to us in the mighty name of Jesus. I want us to know one thing. You cannot receive the mantle and reject the battle. It is impossible. There is no way you will receive the anointing. There is no way you will have an encounter with the Almighty God and you just think everything will just go straight like that. There will surely be one battle to fight at every point in time. You will see it in the case of Isaac. After Isaac dug the very first, the, after Isaac got to the very first way, he realized that the way that Abraham dug initially, 
the, the, the people of Abi, the people of Philistine, they've decided to pour earth, they've decided to pour sand into it. He dug another one, they battled with him. Even at Rehoboth, they battled with him until he got to Beersheba. And there, they realized that, no, we cannot fight this one. It's better we make peace with him. Until you're able to surpass your enemy, until you're able to confront all those battles and you're able to make a clear difference, they will not come to reckon with you. But once they realize that, no, this person is different. This, it seems as if this person has some, something that we don't have. It seems as if this person has a father that we does not have, that is when they will come back and reckon with you. And I pray that all your enemies, we have no choice but to come and reckon with you in the mighty name of Jesus. Of course, to have an encounter with God, it will require us to leave our comfort zone. There is no way you will remain at your comfort zone and you will have an encounter with the Almighty God. Your comfort zone will be your comfort zone. You will be so comfortable that you won't need to think about any other thing. That is the, the case if you are at your real birth. You will believe that you've been blessed of the Lord. And of course, you can decide to remain there for life until you realize that there is need for you to leave that your comfort zone. The grace to be able to leave our, our comfort zone, the Almighty God will give unto us in the mighty name of Jesus. Any question? Okay, I asked the question the other time. Why is it that upon all these blessings, or is it that Christian, no Christian has ever had a clear encounter with the Almighty God, which makes it to the point that we can't see any member of the, any member of the Christian society that is being named as one of the richest, one of the top ten. I said, don't bother about naming the, uh, the priest. Talk about the Christians in business. There's no evidence. Now, I already told you that when we are talking about the priest, they don't have any business they are doing. They don't have business. They don't have business. And you can, when we are talking about uh, the richest people, when we are talking about the richest, you talk about their fleet of business, you talk about what they have in their own account. Anybody? No, my my take on that is this. I I wouldn't say there are no Christians among them. Maybe in the outright meaning. Maybe we can use the word born again. But almost everybody on the list have some kind of Christian inclination. Do you get it? The first time I read about Mark Zuckerberg, who is the third richest man in the world, he, he once said he's an atheist. But I remember he traveled to somewhere and they asked him, that, do, you, do you believe in God? Like, most of them, they are like, they are igno- some of them are agnostics. Like, God is just somewhere. They don't have the spirit connection. Maybe the way we try to hyper-spiritualize everything in Africa. Do you get it? So that's why I see it. But in a, coming back to Africa, to my problem is oftentimes... Uh, I pray God will open our eyes. If God has not opened the eyes of eager, then sometimes we, we have practiced religion, let me not say Christianity, to the point we feel we don't need to dominate it. I don't know if you understand, sir. We, 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 we feel the mandate God gave to us to come and subdue here. You know? He said dominate. Two instructions, dominate, then subdue. Do you get it? That means you have to first take the territory before you can subdue the inhabitants of the territory. But I don't know, maybe out of, I don't use the word spiritual misconception, but maybe out of what people have been wrongly taught, they believe that where they need to go and dominate is heaven. So that was another problem. So there's a kind of, so, so, I, think that's, so I think because of that, that brings some kind of, I don't use the word ignorance, but we have a lot of ignoramuses in the church, like they are believers, but I'm sorry when it comes to all these things, because of what they have been taught, they cannot see. So that has blindfolded their eyes from seeing the well, even when the well is closed. Some people still believe that as a believer, if you join politics, I remember in school, I, like, you know, if you do politics, you are going to hell. Do you get it? If you do politics, you are, thank God that for those that don't know, we still have our 
taking territories. If you need it, you can meet us in training. You know, they believe that if you still do politics, you are going to wear. And we left the realm of politics for the unbelievers. And today we are all shouting. Some people, some part of the country is dominating with the so-called enlightened. Because we feel it's not our responsibility. The same thing with business. You know, somebody was asking me when I heard somebody came from Adebo is brain and she was like, anybody ah, do you get it? But, but that's it. But basically, God expects believers to be at the ends of all territories. We should be there. So because of our negligence, we have given space. Like, look at England now. I'm just reading a book by it. You know, someone was writing a, a, a biography about sweets. You know, Smith's. Mm, Sweet what? And I'm like, was this the same England? Is there any Pentecostal pastor? At present, in UK, I can point to. There's none. This is the same UK that has produced great generals. But because out of negligence, we left it and people of other faith or unbelievers are dominating the them. So that's my own take on that, sir. Maybe PD will have something to add. Um, praise God. Good evening, everybody. Um, so I think the question is, why don't we have Christians in the top ten helm of the affairs of the nations? So I uh, may not. Uh, I think we have Christians, but they may not fit into our. Sorry, they may not fit into our kind of Christian mode. Yes, we have, sorry, we, we have Christians. Um, to every root of every top, most influential, most kinekon, kinekon, you will find either a Jewish root, a Christian, kinekon. In fact, was it not this week that Donald Trump was more or less preaching from the White House? Now, all those Warren Buffett, check them. There's a Christian link somehow. But they do not look like us because we, we look like church people, we wear bandana, we wear, we dress, you know. Our own kind of church people. But in Nigeria, for example, we have vice president. We have, uh, in fact, the richest woman in Africa is a Christian. Um, Keneko, Keneko, Alakija. Alakija, right? She's the richest black. In fact, uh, Africa is meant to be black, Abi. She's the richest woman in Africa. And she's black and she's a Christian. I've heard her minister twice, three times. And she's deep, but she does not look like um, our kind of Christians, uh, our Christianity something. Also, like Pastor Tunde, anyway, happy birthday, sir. <laughs> yes, like he said, um, maybe the word is not meant to be business. The word is solving problem. If you are solving problem and your, your business model can be scaled to a global level, then you begin to rank in the global market. But if your solving problem is just for your family or for your community, then you rank in that community. Yes, it may be a detriment to Africa or to Africa because the way Christianity was brought to us was also different. It came through slavery. In fact, in, in Namibia, in Namibia, when people pray, they open their eyes because an incident happened. The Germans colonized, um, sorry I'm digressing, but the Germans colonized um, Namibia and there was a particular tribe that was giving the Germans problem, as in they were just very resistant. What the Germans did was that they brought in Christianity to that tribe, they brought all of them into a church and they said they should pray. And when they closed their eyes to pray, they sprayed all of them with machine gun. And they all died. You can Google it. Namibia, in fact, it's still ongoing. They had a present, whatever, in the UK. The enlightened one went to UK to fight international courts and blah, blah, blah. So, meaning that um, the way Christianity came to us, you know, there's this slavery thing. Also, if you observe, the really, really most influential Christian like kind of Africans are people that traveled out. You know, when they travel out, they begin to see that. It's just skin. There is just difference between me and this person. In fact, it's like I'm even better than this person, you know? Yeah, so it helps you to break whatever limitation, like, oh, my, my 
my product cannot pass my way. My product, you know, it's all those big, big people. For example, if somebody still tell you today that some people earn seven million naira every month, we all say, "Wow, glory be to God!" But Koti, our consciousness cannot absorb it that it is real. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so somebody will say, "Maybe that melody because you traveled out, can you go, can you go? Yeah. But it's real. I have people that every, in fact, every week, some people earn five thousand dollars. Like, but you know, our mentality is still like, oh, possible. You know, this pastor, one man fish sugar, sing God, man suck, oh, possible. And it's true. When you look at it with Nigerian economy, you look at it with your certificate, you look at it with the, when they show us statistics that people are suffering, yes. But even in this same people are suffering, some people's bad days, when they make 10 billion naira in three months, that's their bad day as in, ah, market is not moving. That's it. Back to Christians. I think our orientation, thank God for whatever is going on in, especially in MP, there's a lot of paradigm shift taking place there's a lot of breaking of norm there's a lot of us doing the abnormal or teaching the abnormal somehow if you have to put it that way christians are there but they don't look like what we call christians our definition of christians so maybe we need to redefine what we call because really if a nigerian should travel out the church that you attend for the first one month, you'll be asking yourself, are these people Christians? Are these people not Christians? For example, sorry I'm digressing again. You know, there was a, an incident that happened. A Nigerian pastor went there and then he was conducting a, maybe a crusade, I don't know. He was praying. While he was praying, the Onyibo Usher had to go and give the pastor a cup of coffee. That, because the way it was, oh, shagufu, 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 like that. Maybe something's wrong with the pastor that let us help the pastor. You know, the man felt embarrassed. Sorry, is it, I think, is it, it has, it has, was it God, man, I can't remember the person. You know, he was doing our, you know, we say African devil, boss, small, small, you know, and the rest. Doing you both? Oga? Thank you. That was the word. The usher thought, because he's an African, he's feeling cold. So to fight the cold, you know, he's doing physical gym gym so that he could, so, ah, please take coffee so that you know they don't <laughs> if you un- like see the understanding that we have of the Bible now, eh? That same Bible has been in existence over two thousand years ago, right? Or, or more than that, scripture, scroll and the rest. So I would like to say Let's be like the Berean Christ. Imagine the destinies that have been truncated because renowned men of God said it's not good to go into politics. Now, in our time, you have renowned men of God saying that go into politics. So the question should be, who are you obeying? Are you obeying men of God or you are obeying God? Something that is in the scripture. Thank God for Daniel's series. Daniel was a believer was a politician, had social intelligence, and to, and to think that that passage has been written there over 2,000 years ago. And none of us are up to 2,000 years old. Meaning that we could have read that thing a long time ago, had that knowledge a long time ago, been more influential in university a long time ago, be more influential in our economy a long time ago. It's never too late, but... Some time I've gone. Also, in conclusion, our target is not really to be top 10. Keep on solving problems. Keep on doing what God has asked you to do. Our target really is not being in top. And I'm very sure there are multi-billionaires that nobody has even heard of. Who, who said, who gave the criteria that are using to judge? Yeah, so, what criteria are they using? Who said, who said they are influential? Who said they are not influential? God can decide to raise nothing today and make the person more than whatever anybody. So, I believe that we have what it takes. Let us express God and enjoy God. Thank you very much. Hey, let me, I just want to say something. Like, uh, there's something he said. You want to say something? 
Hey, let me just, you know, there's something he said. I, I realized everybody on the list, you know, from, from, from Jeff Bezos to Bill Gates to Mark Zuckerberg to what they might be, Larry, listen, every one of them, I realized that they were all problem solvers. They never aspire to be on that list. Let's understand. So, so that somebody will not think by force, by force. They have to just find a way. But that's the problem with this with the system we have in Nigeria. They were all problem solvers. So the first and foremost thing is God, the well, open my eyes. So when we solve our problems, you know, the, the more the problem you solve and God expands you, that's the more the rise in your wealth. And like what PDO said, in fact, I've asked myself, I was asking myself that question some time ago, like, though I've read about it a while ago, like, they use their stock. Now, was it not yesterday or today, Jeb Bush went back to the richest man in the world. That means if anything happens to, and, and he owns just 16% of Amazon. If anything to happen to Amazon stock, if it falls again, it goes back to number two. So some of those things are a bit, I don't know, maybe a bit, you know, but we shouldn't look at that. Let's, let go, let's pray that God will open our eyes, we see the problem we are able to solve, and God will expand us. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Let me just open up. Let's open up. Okay. Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Praise the Lord. The very first thing, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Of course, as I've already said, you must leave your comfort zone. Your mentality must change, just as it has been said. The way, it's not that the top ten, none of them has a relationship with God. Even Mark Zuckerberg declared for the Lord Jesus Christ in 2017. So a lot, all of, almost all of them had one particular encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ. But their own orientation was not limited the way most Christians decided to limit themselves. Some most Christians, because of the previous orientation, that Christians, you don't what a relationship does uh, light have with darkness. There is we are in this same world together. Christians does not have their own world. We are supposed to come and dominate and subdue this world. We are not supposed to leave the world to people who are not believers in Christ. Don't be surprised that they also have their own encounter with God at one point in time. They might, you, they might be declined to be artists of several other names that they might call themselves, but don't be surprised that at one point in time, they want go to one person or the other who opened their eyes to see one thing or the other, and at that point in time, they decided to go their own way. They, they refused to think like the old Christians who believe that you leave every other thing. You leave the aims of the affairs of the nations to the unbelievers. You leave, let them control you. And when it's time to make law, they make law that will not be suitable for you. They will do everything in their own, based on their own knowledge. They will do everything based on their own understanding. But if we all decided to leave our comfort zone, we decided to go up there, we make ourselves solution pro providers. We make ourselves solution providers. Of course, most believers, we claim to do that. We evangelize almost every day. We tell people about the Lord Jesus Christ. After telling them the, about the Lord Jesus Christ, what other thing are we doing? What other thing are we doing? Most of these resources, even Facebook, preaches Jesus Christ even more than majority of the preachers every day. Why am I saying that? He created a platform where everybody preaches and they make it available to the rest of the world to see. Is that not evangelism? He is evangelizing every second at this moment right now. He's evangelizing because he created the platform for it. Let us be a solution provider everywhere we go. In conclusion, in our own lives, we need to hear these principles as well. Consider where God is leading you right now. Now read God's promises to Jacob at Beersheba. Of course, I made something clear to us. The fact that there is a promise of Jacob over us does not imply you will not have your own personal encounter. Also, true sonship, and now true sonship, 
there are also God's promise to you as well. No doubt about that. But your own personal encounter matters a lot. Also, the God who intervened in Agar's situation is still in the business of fixing situation. All you need to do is call on him. At every point in time, call on the Almighty God. Call on him. Don't leave him behind. Let him give you direction. And I pray that the Almighty God will take us to our own Beersheba in the mighty name of Jesus. Let's stand to our feet. Let's say, Father, Father, open my eyes to see opportunities. After seeing the opportunities, the grace to be able to walk through and walk with you to fulfill destiny, the Almighty God should give unto us in the mighty name of Jesus. Let's begin to pray.